Hi everyone, Tam's here. Welcome back. Thanks for joining me and happy almost new year. I thought I'd end the year with a question and answer session. First of all, for those of you that are joining me, I wanted to say a big thank you. In 2017, I saw more engagement with my paper TAMS project than I've ever seen before. And it was in the form of comments on videos, direct messages on social media platforms, and letters. And um, it was almost, at one point, it was overwhelming. And I fear that I have missed responding to a few of you out there, um, mostly because a lot of my letters had to be boxed up during the hurricane. Uh, so if I missed out on responding to you, I apologize sincerely. But I thought I would tackle three of the most common questions I got this year uh, that I up till now have thought were a little too sensitive to address. Well, two of them were a little too sensitive to address. Uh, the third one's just, you know, just not hard at all. But um, those three, I'll start with the um, easiest. Uh, how do I get things done? Goal planning, that sort of thing. Uh, and then the other two that I got over and over again were, how do I make money with paper TAMs? And um, what is my uh, spiritual beliefs? So we'll start with the easiest one first, and that is how do I get things done? Uh, am I doing a vision board? Do I set goals? That sort of thing. Uh, the short answer is, in the past, I have always created goals and lists for the year. Uh, in the past few years, I have really enjoyed doing vision boards, and I would always set them as yearly I would look at the year ahead. I'm going to change things up a bit in 2018. In 2018, I'm going to do something a little different. Now, this is just from my point of view. I feel like things are changing very quickly in our world. We're in what I call a state of transition. It's just from my point of view. It's just the way I see things. So many things are changing very quickly. So to for me to best handle that in 2018, I'm going to take things month by month. <laughs> I am not going to do a vision board this year. After years of uh, being an advocate for vision boards, and I still think they're great and they work, and if that is working for you, keep doing it. Uh, I am going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to venture out a bit. Um, I had done this on a smaller scale with my career goals this past year and business goals and things like that, and I've just done them month to month. So I do have a little journal this year. It's by Flow Magazine. This was a gift to me. I don't know if you can still find these or anymore. I have seen them at some of the larger chain bookstores, and I have seen them on Amazon, but they seem to be overpriced. Um, so I would suggest you look, if you want one of these, you can use anything. You don't have to have this. Um, you look in the big box bookstores. If you're really desperate, click on the Amazon link below. Um, but what I plan to do is once once a month, set my goals or I am actually calling them intentions now um, and they're just for the month and throughout the month I'm going to record little achievements and um, what I call synchronicities so um, that is what I'm planning to do this month this little notebook is really fun because it has some blank pages at the beginning of each month so you can one is a glare, sorry. So you record, record things. And then for each day, there's a nice block that you can write various things. It's a fun little notebook. If you would like me to do a more in-depth view of this, please let me know. But this is not what's important. The notebook is not what's important. It's, um, you know, the process that I think is important. And that is how I will decide as I put my intentions down for the month. Uh, and reflect on them for the month 
that will decide how I proceed with my days. Um, looking out for a year for some reason to me just seems like too much. It's never seemed like too much before, but right now, for whatever reason, I feel like I need to slow things down and just take things month by month. Now, I do know that first quarter of the year, I will continue to focus on my health care. Um, I have a pretty large goal. I have to lose quite a bit of weight. In 2017, I did lose, after all was said and done, probably about 15 pounds, so yay, but I have a lot more to go. <laughs> I'm very tall, and um, I can carry a lot of weight uh, with my height, I can carry a lot of weight. So 15 pounds on me when it's gone, most people don't notice it. I have to lose about 25 or 30 for people to notice that I've lost weight. That's just the way I'm built. And I can't carry a lot of weight. Um, I start to have problems with what, what people would just call chunky, not obese or anything like that. I start to have the problems that most people would have if they were obese. I start to have them if I'm a little chunky so I've got to get the weight off so there's a lot of things that are in store for me in uh, the first quarter I have been gifted by a family member uh, some visits to a gym called Orange Theory which I have tried out and I really like it uh, it's a little expensive but it's worth it in my opinion to get me back into jogging slash running condition which I used to do all the time and now cannot do so <laughs> I'm going to I'm planning to do orange theory uh, January February and part of March I am uh, going to implement what I learned about various diets or eating habits that I took on in 2017 2017 was very much an experiment for me uh, but I learned that intermittent fasting worked for me and uh, clean eating, whole foods, non-processed food, and just watching a few things. I'm not doing anything too strict, but uh, I am planning to continue on with that and just really start getting this stuff in gear. So we'll see what happens at the end of the first quarter. Okay, second question. How do I make money with paper tams? <laughs> I don't make a lot of money with paper tams. Um, I will be honest with you. I have always had what I call a side hustle, just something I did on the side to make some extra money to pay for fun, frivolous things. I have done a lot of freelance work in the past. I have written, I have been a ghost writer for blogs. I have done some digital marketing on the side in the past as a freelancer. I have just had fun with this new digital world that we are in and um, uh, I was very fortunate that that was I, I was able to make that a full-time job the stuff that I was doing as a freelancer uh, but I still wanted to keep the video making blogging social media content I don't do any content creation now full-time uh, except for paper tams and I enjoy it immensely and uh, paper tams in all honesty has been a bit of a sandbox for me I wanted to explore um, left brain right brain synchronicity I am very fascinated with our brains I come from a very left brain world I was a child that was very good at math, math. Um, I love math. <laughs> I know there are a lot of you out there that think, oh my God, she's crazy. But I was someone that enjoyed math. School was fairly easy for me uh, growing up, and I went into engineering. And there were some things about engineering that I liked and some things that I did not like. But long story short, I was immersed in a left brain world for a long period of time, and I knew that there had to be some type of creative outlet for me. I believe that there is um, an importance in creativity. Uh, I believe there's an importance in just balance. Um, so several of my artist friends, I often encourage them to learn a little bit about economics. <laughs> so it goes both ways. But um, I also have 
Alzheimer's in my family, and I believe that uh, doing both left and right brain activities can help with that. I have no scientific basis for that, but I just feel like it can't hurt. <laughs> so um, that's what I mean by Paper Tams being a sandbox. And uh, creativity for me has always come in the form of cooking, decorating, uh, drawing just a little bit. I didn't show a whole lot of my drawing in the past because I felt like it wasn't good enough. And uh, just making things crafting that sort of thing and I used to hide it I didn't let anyone know I had a little closet that I kept all my supplies in so having a whole room of just fun artsy crafty things is a whole new world for me but I have to say it's been very fulfilling um, and uh, just recently in the past few years I had an epiphany <laughs> basically I joke and say I became a possessed woman and I discovered the creative benefits of gardening. And gardening, I have to say, has been one of the most holistic and wonderful discoveries that I have had um, probably ever. It's, um, it's just been wonderful for me. I don't think it's for everyone, but it has been the most enjoyable creative outlet um, I have ever had. So that whole ramble was to tell you that I did not set out to do paper tams to make money. Can you make money doing YouTube and blogging and content creativity? Yes, you can. Um, and I think there's tons of videos out there that can show you how to do that. It is a lot of work. Um, I do not monetize my paper tams blog. Um, I do monetize my videos and I am an affiliate for Amazon just in case I always put that as a disclaimer down at the bottom of my videos but in case you aren't reading it you should know that uh, I know how to do all that stuff I know how to set it all up and um, I do teach classes now and the past couple I've taught classes in the past but to be honest for you to, with you I didn't make any money because uh, at first it cost me money because I footed the bill for the materials and I volunteered my time and then later I was able to at least make enough to cover the cost and just up until this year I was able to make a little bit of money after I took out the cost the time it took to prep for the classes the kits decorating all that stuff I made a little bit of money to maybe buy you know some art supplies or something like that so uh, paper tams is I'm probably not the best person to ask about how to make money uh, writing letters and journaling and, and that sort of thing. Um, I do know how people make money. Uh, they work very hard and uh, they create a lot of content, which is a lot of work and takes a lot of time. And you've got to love it. Uh, you've got to love what your topic is. So um, I'll be happy to talk to anyone about that offline, but Please know that uh, I did not set out with paper tams to make a ton of money or for it to be my full-time job. So I just wanted to be honest with you guys about that because I have received a lot of letters uh, asking me how I make money. Um, I think several YouTubers have shared how to make money with, um, with vlogging and blogging and all of that sort of thing. Um, and there's a ton of information out there but to sum it up I monetize my videos I have an affiliate link and I teach classes and if you I know a lot of people have Etsy shops and things like that where they sell a lot of their products and things I don't have anything like that will I have something like that in the future I don't know right now I just don't have the time to set it up the way I would like for it to be set up. But I do have some plans each year. I try to take things up a little bit, take it up a notch and learn from the previous year. So I have some ideas in the works about what I'm planning to do in 2008. I feel like this video is gonna be really long and I'm rambling and I hope I'm answering all your questions, um, but I'm just wanted to be very honest with everyone because I really appreciate your support and I don't want you to think that um, there's something else going on. <laughs>
Okay, spirituality. Woo. <laughs> I thought about answering this one and I was a little bit hesitant because I believe a person's spirituality is their own personal business. But uh, I have received a lot of letters where people have assumed things about me. And I just wanted to make sure that I'm very clear. I currently do not subscribe to any organized religious group. Um, and I hope that clears things up for everyone. I have been on a spiritual journey for a long, long time. And I thought I would share just a few milestones with you. Um, because it's my understanding that a lot of people are on a spiritual journey right now and questioning a lot of things. So if it makes you at least feel like you're not alone in the world, I will just share a few things without trying to turn this into a spiritual channel. <laughs> but I grew up in the South, right along the North Carolina, Virginia border. Most of my family is in Virginia. Uh, and while that is the South, I did not grow up Southern Baptist like a lot of stereotypical people like to um, like to think about we Southerners. Uh, most of what I was surrounded by were a lot of Methodists, some Episcopalians. Um, we had a couple Baptists in there. <laughs> um, and one of my best friends growing up was Jewish. And I am from a family that did not, you know, did not care. I went to temple with her sometimes. It, it wasn't a big deal. And of course, with proximity to Washington, D.C. and Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill, um, it wasn't unusual to be around a lot of highly educated people. And a lot of the, it wasn't unusual to be around a lot of people that we would now call agnostic, just people that didn't know anymore. Um, and I think that's normal in, in those types of um, circles. I'm just laying it all out there for you. Um, I found as a child a great deal of solace in going to church. Now, p please keep in mind that the types of Methodist Episcopal churches I attended, I, I loved them because of the traditions, the seasons. I loved following the liturgical year. I loved, um, I just, I just loved the ritual of it. And I found a lot of comfort and that is what I associated with spirituality growing up was just comfort, a lot of comfort. I, I did not expect um, God to give me material things or give me jobs or anything like that. So that is my childhood impression um, that I had, which I think was very fortunate. Um, as a young adult, I started after college and moving around for jobs and things like that, that I did find myself, I had to move to Memphis, Tennessee for a while. And that was really um, the evangelical movement, charismatic type Christian movement was a part of where I grew up, but it was like peripheral. Um, wasn't a huge part of my life and then I moved to Memphis Tennessee as a young professional and I found myself in a bit of a pickle um, I met some wonderful amazing people and they tended to fall in two categories either they were very scientific uh, because remember I am I studied engineering and went to work as an engineer so I was around a lot of very international um, scientific, worldly people who would most likely be categorized as agnostic, and I love them dearly. And then I was also around a lot of people that were more a part of a, um, what I would call a charismatic, Pentecostal, um, evangelical Christian movement, and I enjoy those people as well. But those were two extremes for me. Um, and I found myself to be very conflicted, confused, uh, rejected, <laughs> which was probably healthy. Um, and I kind of just tossed it all to the wind, to be honest with you. And um, those years were, like all of you, 
life happens and there's challenges and difficulties and losses and heartbreaks. And um, I just kind of said goodbye to it all and did not really uh, subscribe to anything. Now, I will tell you that two people that inspired me tremendously as a young person were C.S. Lewis and Madeline Lingle. I read all their young adult fiction books and I read their books of, I, I guess you'd call it theology, and I really enjoyed them, especially Madeline Lingle. She is probably one of the most influential people in my life, in my reading life. Um, she taught me that I could be a scientist and still have faith. And um, that was very important to me because I was coming across a lot of people that were telling me I couldn't have both. And so um, there was a part of me, there has been a part of me for the past few years that has wanted both. I just don't know what that looks like right now. I am exploring a lot of things. I will tell you the only things that have resonated with me, I would say on a spiritual level, have been in nature. So I am very much uh, pulled toward nature-based type spirituality. Um, I just think that nature is magical. And that's pretty much all I have to say about that. <laughs> I hope that that uh, answers a lot of your questions. I know that's pretty vague and probably disappoints a lot of you, but I am in 2018. This little book that I shared a little earlier, this is actually what I'm calling my spiritual journal. And um, we'll see what happens with that after the end of 2018. So I, I hope that you guys have had a wonderful um, 2017, I know it was hard for a lot of people, and I hope that you are as, are excited about 2018. I don't think you should worry too much if you haven't set up some master plan of goals and mission statements and vision boards and all that. But if you have, awesome. <laughs> and if you just want to take it uh, month by month with me this year, I encourage you to, to join me. I'll try to share some of that. I won't share all of my goals and things like that. Not, I wouldn't expect anybody to do that on YouTube, but I'll share with you a few things and we'll just take it by month by month and see how that works this year uh, for us. And um, anyway, I wish you all a very happy new year. Thank you so much for your support in 2017 and um, I look forward to our adventures in 2018 and I'll see you on the other side. Bye.